Hello, this is Ruben from Property Solvers. Uh, welcome to another podcast. I'm here with James there. How are you doing, James? I'm good, Ruben. Yourself? Good, good. Yeah, I'm all good. Thanks. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how to establish how motivated a uh, property seller is. And we're going to be coming from the angle of uh, most listeners who are going to be looking at properties on the open market. So, you know, that will be going on to right move, for example, um, speaking to agents and, and arranging viewings. So we're going to start by kind of looking at it from, from that angle and then maybe look at kind of what we do at Property Solvers and how that how that's different. Um, so perhaps we can start by um, some of the telltale signs that you could recognize from um, someone who is um, particularly motivated to sell. So, you know, you're, you're on a viewing and you're trying to figure out how urgently that seller wants to move. What would be your initial thoughts, James, on that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a big topic uh, for sure um, about how to find these these sort of motivated sellers. I mean, I would say that the, the, the journey should start really on right move. Um, so, I mean, the first thing you want to be looking for is maybe properties that have been on the market for a long time. So like if you're keeping an eye on the local market, you might notice that there's a number of houses like in your area that you've identified that seem to be on for like a number of weeks. Mm. Sometimes that can be a sign um, that maybe a seller might be sort of getting more and more motivated. Obviously, the longer that you've got a property on the market, um, the more open you are to receiving offers on it. I mean, that's not true for all vendors because some people are just unrealistic and they leave their property on the market for months without changing the price. But generally, it can be a first sort of sign that maybe that vendor could be open to an offer. Um, yeah. So I would start out there. And there's there's also little tools and add-ons like Chrome extensions. And yeah, I was, I was just going to mention those. So um, what, I mentioned them in a podcast I did a few weeks ago when you were away, James. One is called Property Log. Uh, the other yeah. is Patma, and the other is called Property Tracker. So mm. um, they're all free group. Oh, actually, you no, know, Property Log you might have to pay for um, now, but um, they're, they're, they're reasonably cheap anyway, and you can kind of see the drops in prices that have occurred over, you know, um, a set period of time or since the property was launched on the market. So they're quite useful to see how motivated a seller is. You know, if they're if they're making their their price drops fairly frequently. Um, well, it could be a sign that the estate agent has overpriced the property as well. Um, but generally, you know, you, 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 which is you know, often the case, to be honest. But, um, you know, if you're seeing that the property's on the market, it's getting some drops, but it's still not getting the bites it needs. then that's probably yeah, a good sign, as you say. Um, sorry, James, I've kind of interrupted you there. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, another thing would be, obviously, um, so you, you can keep an eye on the, the price drops, how, how sort of short the time frames between each drop are. Like obviously, if somebody's getting more motivated, you will find that the the frequency of the price drops are increasing and and shortening in in length, and um, so that can be a sign that somebody is motivated. Also, obviously, properties in in bad condition. Um, so you know, if a property needs a refurb, a lot of the time these properties tend to linger on the market and. You know, there could be an opportunity to put in a low offer on those type of properties. So that's another thing to look for. Um, and then one final thing that I would mention is sometimes um, you will find repossessions listed on right move and you'll be able to spot them because with repossessions, um, whoever is in charge of selling the property is legally, um, legally obliged to get the best offer for mm -hmm. that property. So the offer... The, the, the most recent offer on that property will be listed in the right move listing. So that's another telltale sign that maybe you might be able to get a deal. Um, so, yeah, so that's just a few things I would say, um, you know, on right move before you actually even speak to the agent. I mean, do you have anything else to add to that one, Ruben? Yeah, I would probably say, yeah, that whole problem property thing is is quite an interesting one at the moment because... Um, a lot of sellers are seeing that it's costing a lot to refurb these properties and they're just thinking to themselves, I just don't want the hassle of, of doing it myself, you know? Um, yeah. So a lot of them are kind of saying, well, I'll just put it on the market and see what I can get. 
they try it for a bit of a higher price and then often see that there's not enough bites or they might get viewings and then people are going around and saying, look, there's just too much work that's required here. So with as an investor, what you want to be looking at is um, not only the cost of works, but your margin as well. So if you're refinancing, you need to make sure that you're going to be able to pull out your cash or um, refinancing and pulling out cash is pretty difficult these days. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's probably if you're lucky, you're going to be getting low money down, I think, these days, um, especially with surveyors being quite, you know, vigilant of all those kind of things. Um, but yeah, I, I think also it's worth speaking to the estate agent. So estate agent, really, they represent the seller because the seller is the one that, that pays their fee. So they might not be willing to disclose a huge amount, but you can get a general feel about what the situation is. Um, you know, they will disclose if a property has been inherited, for example, or it's going through uh, probate, or if there have been certain issues that have happened, you know, perhaps the sale has gone through and there have been a buyer agreed, um, but then it's fallen through at the valuation process. So it's in the estate agent's best interest to get the sale over the line. So you, as a buyer, you really should be communicating with them and finding out as much as you can. Um, because ultimately, if they're not selling the property, the seller may well de-instruct them or, or look for someone else or come to an auction house or, or whatever. So, you, you know, you can get quite a bit of information from, from um, uh, an estate agent. Um, one thing I would say about, um, you know, trying to find investment properties through estate agents. I, I definitely think it's a good uh, a good strategy, but I would say you're probably better off looking at auction houses um, and kind of seeing what's available through them. I think you, you're more likely to get the better kind of deals through them simply because the, the term motivated seller, it, it's across the board really, but really at auctions, you, you, you know for a fact the seller is, just wants to kind of get rid of that property pretty much i mean some there are some out there that you know have their own reasons but i think you're likely to find more motivated sellers either through um the traditional auction houses um or the modern auction houses would you agree with that james yeah i would to a certain extent but i, I do think pro probably you will get better deals um through auctions but definitely like we know a lot of investors who do buy through estate agents and obviously if you're a normal buyer and you're just interested in, in hearing about sort of like how to find out the sort of telltale si signs that maybe a vendor might be motivated or to try and work out like how much you should offer for a property, then, you know, I think it's still worth um, having a look at the whole estate agency route. I mean, yeah. options are there. People know what to do. You go to auction, you register and um, you can bid on it. Whereas I think like with estate agencies, sales maybe people are a little bit more unsure in terms of like how you should act at a viewing like um what sort of questions to ask you know like um because for example like for me um like obviously the best thing i think to do if you are if you do find the property on right move that you want to go see or it's in your area um, and you want to see if, if potentially you can buy that property, it's, it's best to get in front of the estate agent. So just ring them up, get them to a viewing. And then once you go to the viewing, like this, you know, you can approach the viewing with, with a couple of objectives. Um, so obviously, like one of the main objectives when you go to a viewing is to try and find out from the agent, like how motivated that, that owner is. Because basically that will determine how much movement there is in the price, right? So, I mean, we know a lot of people, Ruben, and when they go to, like, if you think about, let's say, your parents, when they go to see a house and your mother might fall in love with it and, you know, they'd be saying what a beautiful house it is and how much they love it and, and whatever. I mean, if you are an investor or you want to be sort of um, smart with how you're approaching purchasing a property you really want to keep your emotions in check and um, in viewing and really not give much away at all in terms of like how much you like that property because you got to remember as you said earlier um the estate agent is working with the vendor mm. and it's the estate agency's estate agent's job to get the best possible price for that property and if they can see that you absolutely have fallen in love with that property they're going to be going telling the owner look, I think this guy is going to pay 
you know, close to asking or he's, he's going to pay full market, full market price for this property. Mm. Um, so that's one of the things you need to bear in mind when you're going to a viewing. And basically, you need to approach it from like, what do I want to know in this viewing? And what, how can I use the estate agent to my advantage um, to get the information that I need to make the offer that I want, right? Mm. And a couple of key things that I would say for that is, number one, you want to know what the actual situation is uh, with the vendor, right? So this is really important. Like, what, why are they selling, you know? So you could ask, ask the, estate, the estate agent casually, you know, do you know this, what the situation with the, with the vendor is or, or why they're looking to sell? And um, obviously, for some of the reasons that you mentioned earlier, like if it's a probate, um, it could be a divorce case, any of these, they're sort of reasons where the motivation level would be quite high uh, mm. for the vendor. And obviously, the situation really plays a big part um, in determining like how quick that vendor is looking to sell. I mean, you can just ask the agent like other questions as well, like, I mean, what's the interest levels been like in the property so far, you know? Has mm. there been any offers on it? How long has it been on the market? Um, all these questions will help you to build a picture of what the situation is with the vendor, like what the situation is in terms of like the current state of the market with the property, you know, is there much interest in it? Obviously, if there's a lot of interest, and there's a lot of offers, it's going to be very, very hard for you to buy that property cheap. And mm. um, I mean, you can get in there early. That's one thing. I mean, if, if, if you're like really closely watching the market and you see a property that comes up in your area cheap, you know, you can beat the crowds. That's one of the ways you could get a cheap deal. Yeah. Um, but obviously that, you know, you need to know what properties are selling for in your area, what your price range is. Um, and then get in there and, and find out, you know, what, what the situation is um, with the vendor and, and how, how soon they're looking to sell. Um, and you can use all that information to then dictate what, what sort of level you go in at in terms of like your offer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, another thing that's happening with a lot of estate agents, if they're not selling their properties, they're working with auction houses like us, uh, often putting them through the modern method of auction. So if you see that the estate agent has kind of changed tact and um, suddenly kind of you see it listed, but listed for modern method of auction, that's usually a sign that the property isn't doing that well on the open market. And they've had to kind of shift it over to the to the auction strategy in order to find buyers and get a secure, you know, um, uh, a, a secure purchaser in place. You know, um, I mean, all these questions with, with ourselves at Property Solvers, we we're able to kind of bypass all of this because we're dealing with di um, with sellers directly. You know, we're not. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the best way. I mean, if you, if you can get direct with vendors, that's the absolute best way that you'll be able to sort of establish what the vendor's needs are. Because sometimes also with estate agents, like maybe it could be just a, an intern that they've got working there that they've just sent out to do the viewings, you know? So you're not always getting the direct ear of the vendor. So yeah, hundred percent, Ruben. Like, if you can contact the vendor direct, and um, even you know, some people use direct mail for like target properties on the market for sort of let's say twelve weeks or longer, or ones that have had price drops of ten percent or whatever, and just fire them out a letter. You know, that's that's another way. Yeah, it's um, a practice that estate agents hate for hate for obvious reasons, but there's a lot of people out there doing it. You know, and estate agents poaching business off each other as well. You know, so that does yeah. happen. So I don't think it's just the way the game is. You know, I think I think people are doing that all the time. You know, and if a property is not selling, I don't think I don't see anything wrong with approaching the seller directly and saying it. You know, the the seller might be tired unless of unless they do it to one of the properties that we've got listed. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Then the whole picture changes. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you've got to be careful as well because the estate agent. Um, could be tied in so um, the, sorry the seller could be tied in with the estate agent so just just check that as well um, yeah. even if you do make a deal you just, the, the seller may still have to pay the commission um, yeah. over so yeah it's worth checking that out um, so in terms of um, 
the kind of uh, bigger deals that you you know with with kind of commercial deals and land deals and things like that. I do know that there are, there are quite a few agents out there that are willing to kind of conduct meetings with sellers, and they'll kind of be the in between because if you're trying to build a, a you know a solution with a seller and it's a bit of a complex deal, then agents are open to that. I think. Um, I just think generally with kind of residential houses, you know, your two, three bed semis and terraced houses, it's not going to be possible to speak to the seller, which is why at Property Solvers, we've always gone for that approach of speaking to sellers directly because we can build direct solutions with them, you know, on the basis of their situation. And we get to know exactly what's going on. Uh, yeah. Even today, we've been dealing with a, with a seller that's got um, a, a property that's been sublet, you know, um, and we wouldn't know that information if it was just through an estate agent. You know, we wouldn't be able to ascertain what's going on here. So, you know, we're able to kind of establish what the solution is and build a real win-win, um, you know, outcome for the seller as well on the, on the back of that, uh, which is just really difficult when dealing with estate agents, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, James, did you want to have any, add anything further on, on this? But just the other thing I would add um, when you're doing viewings on, on the letting agents, I mean, I mean, in terms of like your objectives, when you get to the viewing, I mean, the other thing that you need to keep an eye on is obviously like what sort of condition that the property's in and key things to look out for um, that could mean sort of signs of structural issues or things that could affect the value, right? So like the main things that we look at Ruben, I think when, when we're going to look at a property is, number one, start from the outside, right? So you can have a look at the roof. Um, <clears throat> does it look old or are there tiles missing or whatever, you know? Um, roofs are extremely expensive to repair. Um, so it's something that straight away when you pull up to a property from the curbside, you can sort of take, take a look at the roof. Um, also, you want to notice like the doors and windows, are they double glazed? Mm -hmm. um, also can be expensive to replace and have a really adverse effect on value if they're sort of old windows and doors. Um, things like cracks on the outside of the wall <clears throat> on the outside of the house, I mean, obviously, the bigger the crack, uh, the more potentially dangerous they could be in terms of the structure of the building. And um, so there yeah, are a couple so of tends to be, it runs along the bricks. So you kind of see like the the zigzag shape running along the bricks, that's usually a, a sign of subsidence. In, in yeah. Houses, yeah. yeah. And then just a couple of things, like when you, like <clears throat> we would suggest probably if you're going to a view and you, you could actually have a little list, a little tick list. So just a few things that you can check off. Mm -hmm. um, those ones that I just mentioned being one. And then when you get inside the house, like the main things that you got to worry about is number one, damp, um, <clears throat> whether that be rising damp, um, you know, or down from like condensation or whatever, it's it's still a problem, right? So you can actually pick up like a damp meter if you want to, and um, which you can just hold against the wall and that will uh, detect if there's damp in the wall. And um, so they're not expensive. They can be a useful tool to bring. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, damp is one thing inside. And um, the other thing you want to <clears throat> take a look out for is, is sort of the floors. <clears throat> So whether the floors are like undulated, um, you know, that could be a sign of subsidence again. Um, so, you know, subsidence can be an extremely serious problem um, in houses and it's, it's expensive to, to fix because you've got to underpin the, the property and stuff like that. So sloping floors and um, keep a lookout for that. Um, yeah, just on the on the damp one, um, yeah. damp can sometimes be caused just by a leaky gutter, you know. Like it can be fairly minor, so yeah, you know, it can be. So take a fairly objective view in it, and subsidence as well. You know, it's one of those issues that be careful of because even if a property has had, you know, had the subsidence sorted out, it's still slightly tainted um, yeah. by the fact that it's had a history of subsidence. You know, it's a scary so, word for buyers. Yeah, people just hate it. Hear that. Even if it's the the property is now structurally sound, it just puts off buyers generally. Yeah. Uh, open market buyers in particular investors sometimes it's just yeah by the buy they don't really look at it as a big issue but yeah um open market buyers are certainly going to be scared. definitely affects value i mean if, if, yeah. if i know that the property's had subsidence i'm not going to be offering the same as what i'd offer on a property that hasn't 
a history of subsidence, regardless of whether that subsidence has been sorted or not. So yeah, definitely one that affects value. Mm, unfortunately, yeah. Um, okay. Just, yeah. So yeah. Don't you? Sorry. Yeah. So just another couple of things like that are really easy to check once you get into the property. So you have a look at the electrics board and um, see if it's like a relatively new fuse box. So if it is relatively new, it'll have loads of those flip switches um, and it will look relatively new. You know, the old ones you can recognize. Mm. Um, and obviously, if you need to rewire a property, that can be extremely expensive. Mm. Um, have a look at the boiler. And see what sort of age the boiler is as well, um, just to get an idea of whether that needs to be upgraded. And then obviously there's there's the normal things that you, you'd look out for, like the kitchen and bathroom. Um, but obviously all of these features on the inside um, can help you formulate your offer. So and can also help you justify your offer when you put it to the estate agent. You know, you can say, okay, obviously my offer is a little bit below what the asking price is, but I'm just to find out on the basis that it needs such and such work works done to the property. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's just a, a few things on, on the actual condition um, of the property when, when you get to the viewing. Yeah. yeah, definitely in the roof as well. And yeah, general state of the property, state of the garden, all these costs that, you know, you often think aren't gonna to be too expensive can, can often build up after you purchase the property. And they could hear. Yeah, I mean, we've spent we've spent like ten k on just like a, a, a small terrace house on on the front and back garden up north. Yeah. You know? So yeah, you'd be surprised. They really can these sort of hidden costs can really add up. So obviously, you need to take all these into account when you're when you're doing your figures. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, brilliant. Um, yeah, another great conversation, James. Do you have anything further you wanted to add? I think that's it, Ruben. Hopefully, there'll be a few tips there that people can use. Great stuff. Great stuff. So, um, yeah, as always, please like and subscribe. Feel free to contact myself and James. And, yeah, we'll look forward to doing this again next week. Okay, thanks, Raven. Thanks, guys. Take care. See you next Bye. week. Bye.